The sermon scripture for today is from Genesis chapter 1, verses 27 through 31. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything, and he, made, he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. <clears throat> Shall we pray? Well, thank you so much for this time. And we want to hear your voice. Please speak to us so we can apply your voice to our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, last week I read a very interesting article in the magazine of Forbes. Forbes is one of the famous magazines in this country. The title is, Who Owns or What? It's a very interesting article because in this country, and there are 50,000 uh, self-storage units, and each, the business is growing and growing and growing. The first storage unit opened in the late 1960s, and since that time, the storage unit is growing all the time. The one expert about the industry says that the reason that the business is growing, three things, diverse, dislocation, and consumerism. People just buy stuff, but later they don't need it or they don't own it. So the number of the self-storage units, over 50,000, is more than a McDonald's. The real problem is 5% of those who store their stuff in the storage give up their property later. They don't even know what they have. So the owner of the storage unit put those 5% of property in auction. In LA, I also renting a small unit, a small unit of self storage, and it's been actually four years. And last time I checked my stuff, actually two years ago, before I moved to this town, the storage unit was actually 70 miles from my place in LA. So in here, 70 miles, you can drive, what, out in 15 minutes? If you are a speed racer, you can make it 40 minutes. But in LA, it takes at least two hours. The real problem is, I don't know what I have in the storage unit. That's the problem. We own it, but we don't really own it because we don't know what we have. You know, there is a, a lot of people talking about stuff. The, one of the interesting facts about the article is there are a total of over 40 billion of unclaimed money in this country. Do you know that? 40 billion of unclaimed money. They came from you know, bank account, saving account, social security, or tax refund, and trust fund, and all kinds of government business. That's a $40 billion, and you don't even know you have the money. There's an official website that you can check if you have some money, then please let me know if you want to check it. There are lots of different websites, but they are all scam. There's only one website that's official, certified by the government. Please let me know if you want to check it or not. In this country, Washington Post reported last week that 2017, our national debt is over 16 
trillion dollars. 16 trillion dollars. I don't know how big is the number, 16 trillion dollars. The national debt is also called the public debt that uh, should influence, uh, um, influence our social security and tax refund. 16 trillion means each one of you, including me, have $49,000 debt. Once you are born, you have $49,000 debt. If you have five members, think about it. That's a lot of money. No one can be ever, ever be an owner on this earth. You think that you own something, but actually when you look around your life, you have very little thing, very few things you own. I live in a, a small apartment in this town. I call this is my place, but actually that's not my place. I'm renting it. That's not my place. I'm driving my car. I say this is my car. I'm paying my monthly payment, so that's not my car. This cloth, my mom sent it to me from Korea, so this is not mine. Computer that I use, our uh, memory committee bought it for me two years ago, but that's not mine. The books that I bought, I used the church budget given, given to me, so the books that I bought, all those books in my library, they are not mine either. How about my sermon? Not many people know that sermon is intellectual property, belongs to this church. You hire me, you pay me to preach. So the preaching that I preach every Sunday belongs to this church because intellectual property right. If I preach today's sermon at another church next week, technically I'm violating intellectual property. You can sue me actually. That's why one out of a hundred churches, they uh, post the pastor's uh, sermon script on their website. Not because they want to uh, show their pastor's sermon to the world. It means they just want to see that. They want people to see that the sermon belongs to this church. But our church doesn't need to do that because we have a church website and put our sermon video. All the sermon video and my sermon script belong to this church. That's not mine. How about our children? Can you say, my children is mine? You know, I have two boys, as you know, but the time is coming that they say, Daddy, my life is my life. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> so, my kids are not really mine. Someday, they are going to be independent. So living in this world, we barely own anything. No one can ever be owner on this earth. Biblically speaking, we can be a manager. We can manage our life. We can manage something that belongs to us. Actually, biblically speaking, we are a steward. Steward is a better word to describe who we are. You know, Proverbs 121 says, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. And 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 9 says, We brought nothing into this world. It is certain that we are going to carry nothing out. We don't own anything on this earth. We are steward. You know, the word steward is so misunderstood because there is no such vocabularies that carry the richness of its true meaning. The proper understanding the word uh, steward begins with our acknowledgement that God owns everything. Everything belongs to the, world, uh, to the Lord. All that we have ever received also belong to the Lord. But how about us? What we have? 
We just have a privilege to manage all the things that are given to us. You know, based upon what I'm saying now, we're going to look at three uh, different passages to understand the depth of this stewardship. Would you put uh, up the three scriptures up there, Ben? And Ben is a high school kid. He is here every Sunday doing a great job, Ben. Thank you so much. Without you, I'm not able to preach. So let's look at, let's read together. We have three uh, different scriptures. Do you have me 8, 18? Can you read together? But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestor. Second is uh, first uh, Chronicle 29, 12. There. Let's read together. Lord, which in honor come from you, and you rule over all in your hand and a power and might. It is in your hand to make great and to give strength to all. The last one is a proverb uh, 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord makes rich, and he has no sorrow with it. When you read these passages, you see that all the things we have belong to the Lord. But these uh, passages don't only mean that the finance belongs to the, world, belongs to the Lord, but everything we have, our knowledge, our gift, each one of you have gifts. You know, music, art, you know, sports, have, uh, sewing, you know, cooking, you know, driving. You all had gifts given by the Lord. That gift belong to the Lord. Everything we own. Maybe some of you have more gifts than other people. Some of you have something that other people don't have. Maybe other people have something that you don't have. I believe we as God's children have more gifts and talent than those who don't know Christ. Not because we are better than them. Not because we are good people than those who don't know Christ. God put us in a circumstance, better circumstance, where we have a better opportunity to use our gift. It is called God's grace. We all have God's grace. We have a better circumstances. We have a better opportunity because God gives those circumstances an opportunity to glorify His name. That is called God's grace. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 says, we are engaged in this ministry by God's grace, so don't lose your heart. Paul doesn't just talk or talks about the ministry as a pastor or what church leaders do. Paul talks about all our lives, your job, your gift, your talent. You are all engaged in your life by God's grace. So don't lose your heart. Don't worry about it. Because God takes care of you. He knows what you need. All we need to do is just look to the Christ and follow his way. It's God's grace. We are created in God's image. That's God's grace. You know, today's scripture, uh, Genesis 1, 27, scripture said, God created the first human being in his image. You know, we misunderstand this passage. Sometimes our focus is on we are created in God's image. Focus is us. We are created in God's image. It sounds like we are created by some sort of you know, high intellectual being or some sort of universal you know, divinity, divine being, which is not God, we believe. So we have to refocus on this passage. 
God is the subject. God created us in His image. God is the one who created us. God is the one who gives us the authority and power to rule this world. So everything belongs to the Lord. That's why we shouldn't worry about what we do. That's why we shouldn't be anxious about our life and what's going to happen in the future. So everything belongs to the Lord. That's our nature. God gives us the, the intrinsic nature within us that we shouldn't worry about. Because God owns us. God owns everything. That's a faith. That's a true faith that really needs, needs to kick in sometimes when you are in difficulty and trouble. You know, I have a few role models who I want to be like, who I follow what they did. And one of them is uh, John We, John Chin We. Actually, we have a picture up there. Yeah, look at that. John Chin We. He was an a, a awesome scholar. And he, you might not be familiar with his name, but he's a very well-known scholar in Asia. And he was a juristic philosopher, educator, lawyer, and judge. He had a top education in the US and in Europe. He was a great contributor to set up the foundation of US Supreme Court system efficiently. So if you study law, you might have heard about his name. He also uh, wrote the principle of the Constitution of the Republic of China. He was a big time guy in 19th century. I respect him. He is one of my role models. Not because he's a scholar actually, but because how he fell in love with his wife. You know, in the, in, the, uh, in the 19th century, most Asian countries, especially Korea and China, have marriage arranged by their parents. It's very popular. It's a cultural heritage. So his parents also arranged him to marry a woman, but he didn't want to marry her. Afterward, his parents arranged four more women who had an excellent background because she is a big time scholar at the time. They are all lawyers, you know, doctors, and businessmen, you know, politicians. But John didn't want to marry any of those. He, even, well, wanted, he didn't even want to go out on a date. The one day, John fell in love with a woman at his church. He went to a church and saw a lady who was talking to uh, two little brothers, you know, they were arguing over the apple. You know, this is mine, you know, this is mine. Then his, his, uh, the lady whose name is uh, Teresa, she nailed down, I mean, like this, and looking to the, the brother's eyes and said, you know, everything comes from the Lord. Everything belongs to the Lord. Why don't you, why don't you guys share? Then he, she split the apple in half and each give each piece to the brothers. John saw what she said. Then he fell in love with her at the sight. The really interesting part is that Teresa was only 17 years old, working in a, a market. She was illiterate. She didn't go to school at all. She didn't know how to read. Her parents were so poor, and her parents had nine children and didn't send her to any school. She had no background, no school, nothing. But John fell in love with her. He didn't care anything except her faith in the Lord. Everything belongs to God. That's John's philosophy of life. Everything he has, all his Intellectual abilities belong to the Lord. That is faith. That's the faith we need to have 
living in this world. Luke 9, before sending Jesus' disciple, Jesus said, Tell nothing for the journey except back, step, uh, uh, no, no back, no step, no money, uh, no bread. What's the last one? Anyone knows? Uh, no shirt. Take nothing for the journey. Here, Jesus said, take nothing in Greek. Very interesting word. It has two different meanings. One is, don't hold it tight, or hold it loosely. Second meaning is, open your hand, let it go. What Jesus says, don't hold tight for the journey you have. Open it, let it go, hold it loosely. Don't hold tight what you think is most important for your life. Back in the 2000 years ago, you know, bags, stand, money, bread, and shirt are necessary for the journey. That's uh, what Jesus talks about. Don't hold tight what you think most important thing for your life, for your job, for your family, for your career. We all have different life background. But what Jesus says is, don't hold tight. Let it go. Open your heart. I open your hand. That God is going to fulfill your hand with His grace and love. That's a true meaning of stewardship. We are steward. All we need to do, follow God's way. Follow His command. That God is going to provide everything we need. Hold it loosely, what you are holding on to. You think that's the most important thing to make your life successful, but to God, that's not very important thing. Most important thing is we have to trust in the Lord who can provide everything we need. You know, Jesus never say, well done, good and famous servant. He never says that. I will always say that good, faithful servant. In the use of our gift, in the use of our talent, that's what we are long for. To stand before God someday, we will hear him say, Jay, Matthew, Mike, Kathy, Dick, Frank, John, Marty, Pat, well done, my faithful servant. You use my gift for my glory and for the kingdom. Let's pray. Well, thank you so much. This is a very simple principle of our faith. Everything belongs to you. What we own is not ours. It belongs to you, Lord. Help us not to worry about because you know what we need you know what we need to do. Help us just to see you, follow you, and trust in you. In your name we pray. Amen.